Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is Adam Rowlett with Adam So Fun, and you are in my new quilting space, um, studio, whatever you want to call it, bedroom. Um, I can't believe I'm showing you this. It is a mess. Um, but I have the important TV and PlayStation, so we're good. Um, so this is what I've been doing. I've been trying to get everything situated. I made my cutting table, pressing table. It has all my stuff in it. Um, and I'm so excited because things I find. My stack of um, Dream Big panels and my poinsettia panels and my ginger burst stuff, like all the things I love. So I'm finding them. So other panels that I bought that I forgot. So I'm gonna get really excited with um, Pro Stitcher. Hopefully I'm up and stitching next week. That is my plan and that is my goal. So um, today we're starting a new series. It is going to be uh, playing in Pro Stitcher and um, kind of like the diving into, into designer series. We're gonna go in and I'm gonna demystify some of the buttons. I, I find a lot of people just don't know what those buttons do, are scared to touch them. So I'm gonna go in, touch them, show you what they actually do so you can use them in real life. Um, today's video is like part one. So what is the pro stitcher screen? What do you see there? Like all the buttons. And then we'll also talk about your workspace because the workspace is kind of really, really important in pro stitcher because it is your universe. It is what's going on in your home, on your frame specifically. Um, anything else to report? Uh, not that I know of other than overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Sorry that this video is coming out late. Um, on Tuesday, I'm like, oh, I should make that video. And then I woke up this morning going, oh my gosh, it's Friday and I haven't edited the video and I didn't do the intro yet. So here's your intro. Um, yeah, as always, thank you for watching. You can follow me, Adam So Fun, on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and that's S E W, uh, for this video, like subscribe, hit that bell. So you're notified when the new videos come, especially like now, whenever they're late. And, um, I'm, I'm excited to have the long arm back. I have a lot of plans coming for or going forward. Um, I know my October is super busy. I'm, I think home for like four or five days total, but, um, I'm going to try to get everything filmed before I go. So I can just release those once a week. And then, um, November and December, I'm kind of taking a step back. Uh, keep posted on Facebook and Instagram because I have an idea for the December stitch along. So I will post that to see what you all think because I want to make sure that you all like it. Actually, I don't care. I've been doing it either way, but if you want to join me, then you'll know what supplies you'll need to get. And um, I am just super excited to um, stitch something, hopefully next week. Keep keep your eye out. But um, yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you back after the Pro Stitcher part on the computer. Hello quilters and welcome to part one in playing in Pro Stitcher. Um, this series is going to go through kind of Pro Stitcher, through the tabs, what the functions actually do, just kind of showing you what those buttons do. I, real, I realize, I find a lot of times people just don't know what the buttons do. And then I show them something in class and they say, Oh my gosh, I have been doing it the hard way this whole time. Um, I think it's good to know the hard way. I think, or I did the hard way for a real long time and then realized, oh, there's easier ways to do this. But if you know how to do the hard way, you always know that it can be done. So at least you know a way to do it, if that makes sense. Um, so in this first one, we're just going to talk about the screen, what you actually see here, how things work in Pro Stitcher, what's a workspace. I mean, people... Right there, that's something that we don't understand. And what are all these buttons that we can see here? Um, and then in each week, we'll kind of dive into um, the different tabs and go in more detail. So when you're looking at your Pro Stitcher screen, and again, we're going to be working in Pro Stitcher Premium. Um, at the top, we have all our tabs. File, Edit, Area, Repeat, um, Pro Stitcher View, Tools. And don't forget these two. They are Information and Your Settings. So um, in Pro Stitcher, we're always going to start at our tabs. We're going to work tabs, ribbon, sidebar. So right now we have the file tab selected. And in the file tab, the ribbon is design, workspace, area, save, close, clear all, update, and shut down. Um, remember, this is where we're coming to shut down our system. We're never going to just hit the shutdown button on the tablet. We want to click shut down and we want to hit shut down. And we're always doing tablet first and then the machine, back of the machine, and then unplugging it. Um, so tabs, this ribbon changes 
dependent on what tab you're on. If I'm in the Modify tab, I have different options. Area tab, different options. The other thing that changes is the sidebar. This also changes dependent on what you have selected. So in those other videos, we'll dive into this um, kind of reposition sidebar and talk about what these buttons do and stuff. But here, we are just going to talk about screen. So um, right now, I have the File tab selected. These are my options. I have an area and a design open in my, in my workspace. So I have an area and design sidebar tab. Um, when I open a design, the design sidebar tab pops up. It tells me what the design name is, and it tells me the width and the height. Um, you also get these designer notes. So if there is a design you really like, you can click on it, on these designer notes, if it's if it's available, and it tells you this is chess set made by Handy Quilter in 2011. Maybe it's made by a different designer. You're like, oh, I really like that design. Then you can come in and you can, um, or you can go and find, see if that designer maybe offers more designs. Um, this is like things uh, on Quiltable. Maybe you bought something from Quiltable. You didn't realize who the designer was. And let's say it's from Lady Jane. And you're like, oh my gosh, I love these feathers from Lady Jane. So then you're going to go back to Quiltable and you can go just search uh, Lady Jane's. Um, and, and I'm talking about her because I'm about to use her stuff in whole cloth. But um, you can search her files and go from there. You have other designs that that same person has digitized and designed. So that's what the designer notes are for. Um, so... You have, I have my design tab and my area tab over in my sidebar tabs, and they are there for information. This shows me my width and my height of my area. And then I also have my workspace tab, and this is a very important tab because it shows you everything that lives in your workspace. So let's talk about workspace next. Workspace is this white box you see. And um, I always, when I'm teaching, I ask people, like, are any of you fans of the Marvel movies? Spider-Man and... Um, Iron Man and all of those, the Avengers, because all of that stuff is happen happening in what they call the Marvel Universe. It's this alternate universe that's really like modern day New York, but all of these things are happening in New York right now, but in the Marvel Universe. Well, when you start your Pro Stitcher, it creates your Pro Stitcher Universe. No pro, stitch, no pro Stitcher universes are alike. They're all separate. And it gets created every time you turn your machine on. So say I'm working and I'm doing everything and I have set up my edge to edge. And um, let's say it's, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of, let's say it's something more like a panto and the, the designs have to nest. And my design, this one doesn't really nest. Um, let me just go open one. If I can get to it, uh, I can't, oh, Feather Delight. It's one of my favorite, and I can't even, I couldn't think of what it was called. So I'm using Feather Delight. And if you look at this, um, also, I didn't mention this, but I am working off a simulator. I'm not working on my Pro Stitcher tablet. I'm on my computer, and I know it's simulator because of my green crosshairs. Um, crosshairs matter. Purple crosshairs, you're in free motion. Orange crosshairs, you're in Pro Stitcher. Green crosshairs, you're in simulator. Um, so this feather delight, these nest, so like you can see that this point is going to come up in here. So oftentimes when people use designs like this, they run their pro stitcher into one of their bars. They don't check before they start stitching and it hits a bar. If you've done it, it's okay. It happens to everyone. I did it at a shop six months ago, three months ago. Um, I was talking to someone, I made a design specifically for a class I was teaching. I was, sti I was stitching that design out before people got to class that morning and didn't take into account up uptake on the um, take up bar. And I did, I was shy an inch and I just looked at the owner and we started laughing. I said, oh my gosh, I hit that bar. It happens. It's okay. But when that happens, you get up here. I'm, where mine has S because I have simulator motors, you're going to get a lightning bolt. And it's we call it a motor error. And you have to reconnect your motors after that because the Pro Stitcher is not going to keep trying to run. It's like there's some something's happening, so it stops itself. And um, when you reconnect those motors, you're creating this new universe. So everything is shifted. So you have to keep into mind, anytime you turn off the machine, so you can go to bed at night, you don't have to stay up till 3 in the morning, 
you're moving that universe or you're creating a new universe every time you start that or reconnect those motors. Um, so you might have to move the design. Um, but anything you do happens in your Pro Stitcher universe. So right now I have two designs in an area in my universe in my workspace and I can come over here to my sidebar workspace tab and I can see that I have chest set, I have my area, and I have feather delight. So um, we'll talk about the workspace tab a little bit and when, we're when I'm showing you a few other things, but just remember everything lives in your Pro Stitcher universe. Um, so file tabs, I always call them file tabs. I should just say tabs because there is a file tab. So uh, tabs, ribbon, sidebar. On the left side of the screen, we'll start over here, we have 10 options. These are your quick access tools. Um, and just like Pro Stitcher, or in Pro Stitcher, things are customizable. Um, on our Handy Quilter machines, things are customizable because it's all about getting that machine perfect for you. So these 10 options can be changed, but you always have 10. So just keep that in mind. You can change them, but you do always have to have 10 of them. So if you want to change them, I can click on my settings tab in the top right. Display usually defaults, and you know it's selected because it's green. And then in my sidebar for display, and you can see the display selected over here, I can click assign. And watch, I haven't clicked it yet. Watch over here what happens to these buttons when I click it. I'll click it on three. One, two, three. You see how we get, they turn bigger and we get a little arrow. I call these a little carrot. So um, maybe I don't use mark. Maybe you don't use the mark button. If I click the carrot, and I changed mark actually, it used to be follow. Um, but you have all of these different buttons that you can change it. Maybe you use the basting stitches a lot. So I'm gonna change this to baste. Um, I use five stitches per inch instead of basting, so I don't use the basting stitches that much, but um, maybe you do. So now we have our base button over here. When you're done selecting what you want, oh, I should change mine to duplicate. I'm going to click this button. It pulls it back, and then you can go through and you can set all of these up specifically for you. When you're done, we're going to click assign. They go back to normal, and now you have your 10 options. Remember, there's always 10 but you can make them perfect for what you're doing. Um, the next, I'm gonna click back on the file tab. The next four options here are, I call them my select tools. Um, you will not have simulate. Simulate's only here because I am currently running um, simulator and I need to be able to move my crosshairs. Um, the first one is select. If I tap anywhere on my screen that is not inside a design or on the area, it will deselect everything. And I know nothing's selected because my workspace tab over here doesn't show anything selected. Nothing is green. So if I wanted to select Feather Delight, I could click it on my sidebar in my workspace tab. I could also just come click right on that design. So you have those two options. Um, if you don't want to select anything, you just tap anywhere else. And you have to be careful because if you tap on accident and you pick and you touch the area and you see your area is green, that means it's selected. What happens a lot is our people will select their area and this will happen. And I'm teaching class and I walk by and I, and I say, stop what you're doing. Your area has been moved. And they say, how can you tell? And can you see that that green line is now a dashed line? So anytime you move an area, it turns dashed. Or any anytime you edit an area, it turns dashed. So you have to be careful. Um, in this case, it's nothing. It's just there. So I'm going to click off of it. And you'll see that it stays dashed to show you, hey, you've done something. You might want to take a step back and see what happened. And that's usually when I take my crosshairs to one of the corners on my area and make sure it's in the right spot. If not, I just move it. Um, the next button is pan. And how pan works, put your finger on the screen and you can move your workspace around. So you can kind of see what's going on. Zoom. I'll click on the zoom button and how this works is I can touch the screen, drag and drop a box and it's going to zoom into that box. Maybe I just want the queen. I can zoom in and it's going to make the queen as big as it can or make that box as big, as big as it can. So I can probably zoom in a little more if I did this. The thing that's going to happen with zoom, you're going to do it. Everybody does it. At some point, you're going to forget to take zoom off. And so I'm going to zoom out. 
Um, and you're going to touch the screen. You're going to be like, okay, I'm ready to select my design. And you're going to go touch the design. And I can't do it here in simulator, but on the screen, it, it's just a touch. And everything's going to, what's going to happen, it's going to look like this. And you're going to start freaking out. Oh my gosh, I deleted everything. What did I do? My life is over. How do I fix this? All you've done is if you look over here, I'm still in Zoom. You've zoomed in so close that you can't see anything. Easy, easy fix. We're going to hit this bottom house over here, which is refresh. And now everything's back. You just zoomed in close. So just keep in mind that if things disappear, that's usually what's going on. Um, I'm going to go back to my select tool. And then X form, I can't even touch it right now because nothing's selected. But if I select a design and I hit X form, which stands for transform, it's going to give me all these options. And I can click on any of these nodes and pull them to change the way that design looks. So sometimes skew doesn't work, and this might be a better option. I can also rotate things just a little bit and then make them a little bit bigger if I need to. Um, now we have skew to triangle, so I don't use this as much as I used to, but it is there. And one of these options always has to be selected, just to let you know. So it's always going to stay green until you pick one of the other four. Um, so those are our select tab, or select tools, or that's what I call them. They're probably a better name for them, but that's what I call them. Um, down here, we have select none, select multiple, and select all. Um, if I wanted to select nothing, I can hit, hit click select none, and it deselects everything on the screen. If I wanted everything on the screen, I can select all, and you can see that I get a group over here. If I wanted to just pick the pieces, I can click the middle one, which is select multiple, and then just simply tap on the ones that I want. So those different ways you can select things. And then the bottom right of our screen to finish out is um, our zoom tools. So this is a, just a zoom scroll bar. You can zoom in and out, very easy. Um, you can also just use the magnifying glasses to click, 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 tap, 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 tap. Um, this right here is my favorite button in the whole world. It is refresh also known as the bottom house because it's right under the center house. Um, you'll only have this center house is um, if you have your scroll bars under the view tab turned on. If you don't have those turned on, then it's not going to be there. But um, I keep my scroll bars on, so I call it the bottom house. Um, this is refresh. And what refresh does, I'm going to zoom out a lot, is when I click it, it will bring anything that lives in my universe, anything that lives in my workspace, into view, into my screen. Um, so that is going to be right now my chest set, my area, my feather delight, and my crosshairs. So I'm going to click it. And now I'm looking right at everything. I use this all the time because I can't see and I want, like, I might create an area. I want that area as big on my screen as I can see, especially if I'm trying to feel something. Now let's, let me move some of these things and let's simulate and move my crosshairs here. And now watch the difference. It's going to do the same thing, but now we're just not zoomed in as far because I have more things on my area. Um, and I have a, I'll show you why this is important and when I use this a lot later, but um, that is refresh. This one-to-one -one will show you real time the size of the design you're about to quilt. So if I click this and I scroll around, this is the true size of this design. So um, when I am setting up an edge to edge, I always like to set up my design before I start my repeats. I can bring a measuring tape up to my screen, put it there and see the scale, how big that scale is really gonna be, and then adjust that size before I start doing my repeats. So I love this button. And the last two are zoom to area and zoom to design. So if you have something selected, you can zoom in on it. So those are the zoom tools down here. Um, let's see, did I miss anything on the screen? You have this question mark right here. Um, or, well, I don't know, we told, talked about lightning bolts. You do ha usually have a lock here, or unlock. Um, that's telling you if your motors are locked or unlocked. Um, this question mark is awesome. If you touch it, it turns green and it's help. So I can touch on modify and say, what does skew do? And it tells me I can click over here and it's going to show me what those buttons do. And you can click around. So if you ever 
are not sure at what a button does, you hit the help button, or you hit the question mark, and then you just select the, um, the button you're trying to figure out. So um, you do have to deselect it. So I'm going to open a, works, an, a saved area I had, um, or a saved workspace I had. And I saved this because oftentimes when I'm working on something, if I'm setting up an edge to edge, I might set an edge to edge up. So that I set, well, let's do this one. I set up this design to audition it, and then I just drag and dropped it off my screen. And then I set up this design and drag and drop it off my screen. And then I set up this design. And when I find the one I like, I start doing my editing and stuff. And I forget those other designs out there. When you hit refresh, or let's do this first. I'm going to tab on workspace. Look at all these designs that are living in my workspace right now. There's a ton of stuff in my universe. When I hit refresh, I can see everything that's living in my universe. So now I have the one I like, it's in my area. So I'm gonna come over here to select multiple and I'm just gonna, uh oh, I don't want that one selected. I'm going to click on everything I don't want. Oops. If I click on something by accident, oh, I still want this one. I can select it again to deselect it. But uh, once I have everything I don't like, file, file tab, close in the ribbon, selected. And now I'm back and then I'll turn this off. And now I'm back to my one design. I can set that edge to edge up and go to town. So this is a little bit on just the Pro Stitcher screen. And next week or whenever we get to it, it's probably actually going to be a few weeks when I start getting into these uh, October Sprawl Crazy. And I have a fun thing I'm trying to get out next week. But um, whenever it starts, whenever I get video two out, um, it will be jumping into these tabs and seeing what they actually do. So um, I'll see you back here in just a second. All right, everyone. So that was a little bit in Pro Stitcher and what that screen is and, you know, tabs, ribbon, sidebar. That is just like my mantra whenever I'm teaching and when I'm working in Pro Stitcher. Tabs, ribbon, sidebar. Tabs, ribbon, sidebar. Um, I always tell people you can do whatever you want in Pro Stitcher. You just need to know where those buttons are. Uh, so. Hopefully we start learning where those buttons are and I show you some little secrets and there's I know there's buttons in there that people don't even know what they do and I just that there was a few before I was an educator and I touched them and someone else was like wait what why aren't you doing it this way and I'm like oh my gosh I've been doing it the hard way for two years so um as always, thank you for, so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. We're almost to 5,000 followers. I don't know what I'm gonna give away, but it has to be something good. 5,000 is a big number. We have to hit, so here's the thing. I am about 250 followers away from 5,000. I started this video officially like November of last year. So I wanna hit 5,000 before we get to November. So uh, we have a month. Help me do this, come on. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll find out what I'm gonna give away. It'll be something good. Something, I don't know. Something good. But uh, see you in the next video. I hope you're having a wonderful week. And at the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to laugh and we want to, most importantly, have a good time, even when you're unpacking. We'll see you all later. Bye.